Thank you very much. She would drive us there in her 1986 Aerostar van that she bought with my dad before they broke up our home, traumatized us for all time. And then she was the, the taxi driver. She would take all of our friends home one by one. But she said later on in life that that was like, it, she didn't really feel like it was punishment or a burden because at least she knew that we were getting to and from the concert safe. And, um, what happened to us while we were in the concert, of course, she had nothing to do with, and so when we would get to the concert, we would, you know, Sarah and I loved punk music, and so we would go to these gigs, and we would mosh, and we would crowd surf, and we'd have half our clothes torn off, and our hair would be all matted and huge, we have really long hair, and we'd come out, and half of it would be ripped out, and we'd be covered in terrible bruises, and we used to hold all of our clothes together with safety pins, and they'd be all gone, so our clothes would be, like, ripped up to our thighs, and and my mom would just take us home. And we go upstairs to our rooms. Sarah loved Smashing Pumpkins and I loved Nirvana. And we would listen to it so fucking loud. Like so fucking loud. And my parents must have just sat downstairs in their living room and just thought, when will they be old and when will they move out? And then we decided we were going to be in a band and they were very supportive of this because they thought extracurricular activities were very important to the mental growth of, of us. And uh, so they, they bought us a guitar and then we asked for a PA system and then we would sit in our bedrooms and instead of blaring Smashing Pumpkins and Nirvana, Sarah and I would stand there with our electric guitars running through this cheap PA we bought for $300 and we would scream at the top of our lungs. <laughs> I'm sure that they were like, why? <laughs> when will they grow up? Never. We didn't. You're right. Never. <laughs> we still live at home with our parents. <laughs> Just kidding. Just slip that in to see if you're listening. <laughs> when I wrote this song um, about a day before that, my mom had been visiting me. I live in Vancouver, and she'd come to visit me there. and. Uh, I was heartbroken and I was sad and lonely and she came to hang out with me, which only makes you feel pathetic and awful when you have a heart, broken heart. You're not like, yay, my mom's here! You're like, yep, that's what's left of my broken life. Um, I'm sure she'd appreciate that. <laughs> no, we're like this, we're like besties, but when you're sad, you've replaced your mother. Like, you know, she slept in the bed with me and I just would wake up in the middle of the night and be like, Mom slept in the bed with you? Mom sleep on the floor? I was gonna sleep on you the sleep floor. On the floor. No, I was depressed. I wasn't gonna sleep on the floor. <laughs> anyway. I wrote this song. I just remember she came and we walked and talked and shopped and I was just so I had to put on this happy face and I just couldn't wait for her to go. So I could just go back to laying on the floor all day long, reliving every mistake I've ever made. And I wrote this song. I won't regret saying this, this thing that I'm saying. Is it better than keeping my mouth shut? That goes without saying.
Yes.